Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Alumide McCauley. On today's program, the Nigeria Labor Congress Pickett Sikeja Distribution Company over shortage of power supply and labor issues. Emir of Kanu commends students of University of Maiduguri for their resolve against the odds to get education as school marks 40th anniversary. And motorists groan as fuel scarcity bites in Kaduna State, Northwest Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today, the first edition for the start of the week. And we begin in the nation's capital, Abuja, where the hearing in the trial of the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, in the case of alleged false declaration of assets resumed at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Now, at today's hearing, the prosecution witness tendered the asset declaration form of the Senate President for the year 2011 as exhibit with the defense counsel reserving its objection to a later date. After tendering the documents, the witness began his testimony talking about a property on number 15 A and B, McDonald Street, Ikoyi, Lagos State, which was allegedly bought from the Presidential Committee on Sales of Government Properties by Tiny T, a company purportedly owned by the Senate President. The witness claims that the property was declared by the Senate President as his property. Prior to the commencement of the hearing, the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Mr. Danladi Umar, had directed that the trial henceforth proceed day to day from today until the conclusion of the case. He said the trial will begin at 10 a.m. and end at 6 p.m. every day. Mr. Umar said his decision to conduct the trial day to day is in line with the provisions of Section 396, Subsection 6 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. Now from there, following the breakdown of talks between the Keja Electric uh, with the Nigeria Labour Congress over the disagreement of its laid-off workers, the union today picketed the headquarters of the distribution company in Lagos. The enraged workers and union members who barricaded the facilities of the energy distribution company have threatened to shut down supplies. Meanwhile, the Ikeja distribution company has explained that the current power situation in the country is beyond its control. <laughs> Three weeks back, we were here for almost four days. The management of uh, this organization asked agencies, some security agencies of government, to call uh, the relevant union in the sector for a meeting. And they went to that meeting that was presided over by the one of the agencies of uh, security agencies. And at that time, it was three weeks were given to them to be able to have a consensus on those issues. Now, after one, two meeting, the management failed to turn up again, failed to attend the meeting. They didn't give any reason why they, 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 they didn't attend the meeting. They didn't give, they didn't write to the union, Nepa union, to tell the Nepa union that this is the reason why we didn't come for the meeting. They just said they are not going, they are not continuing with the meeting. So that was why we say, okay, if you are not going to continue with the meeting to, to, to deal with the issue constructively, to deal with the issue, peacefully and amicably, then we're going to resume our picketing, which is why we resume this picketing. Most of these issues that, I've raised, that, that you have raised here, 
are not peculiar to Ikeja Electric. They are, they are national challenges that we have. But let me address the ones that are peculiar to us about the separation of some of the some of our employees last month. You all know the reason why they were separated because this is not the first time you have come to pick at us. But we had to pull out of the agreement because we were not making any progress. That's just the reason. There were too many back and forth, so we felt that okay, look, let us explore other opportunities and see how far we can go. Back. To Kwara State now, where Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed has described the Federal High Court judgment confirming him as duly elected governor as a victory for democracy and the rule of law, noting that the court's decision was an affirmation of the clear mandate freely entrusted to him by the good people of Kwara State. Now, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja had on Friday dismissed the suit filed by the People's Democratic Party, Kwara State's candidate in the April 21st, April 11, beg your pardon, 2015 governorship election, Senator Simeon Ajibola, challenging the election of Senator of Al Haji Abdul Fattah Ahmed of the All Progressives Congress as the governor of the state. Now, Justice S. E. Chuku, in his ruling, dismissed the appeal on the grounds that the plaintiffs had no locus standi to institute the case and on other grounds, as argued by the defendant's counsel in the preliminary objection. In a statement by his senior special assistant on media and Com communications, Ms. Dr. Muyidin Akurede, the governor called on members of the opposition party and their supporters to join hands with his administration to move the state forward. He also assured the people of the state of his commitments to fulfilling his campaign promise before the expiration of his tenure. Now to the South-South, where the Cross River State Governor Ben Ayade has reassigned workers and pensioners in the state uh, that his administration will not disappoint them during, that is despite the downturn in the nation's economy. He has assured them of that and he made this promise during a curtsy visit by members of the organized labor. <laughs> Meanwhile, the organized labor has promised to maintain the relationship while declaring the governor as the most labor-friendly governor in Nigeria, included to formally honor him with an award come what may. For Cross River State to function very well, our labor will come first. It is true because in spite of the challenge I have from my political class, the known political and the known civil servants, the argument is that politically we have focused so much on the commitment to salaries of labor that you forget that they consider less than one percent of the voting force of Cross River State. So for a traditional politician, what I'm doing is not good. But in the eyes of God, I'm keeping his commandment. I do this because I think it's the right thing to do. I do it because I have I've been there and I know the pain. I know what it is when a father is waiting on end to get that small salary for that the child can go back to school. I know what it takes for all of you to wait indefinitely sometimes two, three months, and I bleed with conscience to be paying one contractor who is repatriating that money to his home state or home country while my people are dying in pain and poverty. So as a policy, we have put your salaries above every other consideration. <laughs> if the consequence is that I might have electoral challenges, so be it. Well, I think the will of God shall be done. Mr. Ben Ayade, Governor, Cross River State. You're watching News Across Nigeria. Coming up, the president has uh, decided to send the military to help to curtail the violence concerning the Fulani herdsmen in the state so, uh, concerning herdsmen rather, in states so affected. Please stay with us. <laughs> 